Alright guys and welcome to my next video. Before we get into the video I just need to say two things. A big shout out to two of my friends Patrick McNichol and Sean Conway for drawing me up a new YouTube banner. Anybody that's seen it should go see it. There's going to be a few big things happening with my YouTube channel in the coming weeks so keep your eyes peeled. The second thing is anybody that hasn't already seen my video for the first episode of Life is Strange review should go check it out. Um, I'm going to include the link to the video in the description below. So, Life is Strange Episode 2. The episode happened to come out this Tuesday. I only got round to playing it last night and I've completed it once and nearly finished it a second time. This episode, as opposed to the first episode, had a lot of apparent strengths. I found that Episode 2 had uh, a lot better voice acting than the first episode and obviously the character development will get better. This episode focuses a lot around Chloe and Kate. Obviously you're still playing as Max who is the main character but uh, in this episode we discover a lot more about Chloe's home life. We meet her mother Joyce in the diner and uh, we get to hear Joyce's opinion on things between Chloe and uh, David's relationship. David is one of the prime suspects for the disappearance of Rachel Amber. Um, I found the story for this episode was very, very interesting. I found the actual story was a lot darker than the first one. Uh, in the first episode, obviously, you know, Max, she's uh, just coming to grips with her power and in this episode, you have a lot of light-hearted moments in the game, like with uh, you and Chloe or, you know, you and Joyce, and then it takes a complete change in dynamic where it gets, like, really, really dark, uh, which I thought was very good, very good storytelling, you know. And uh, the thing is, as well, a lot of people seem to forget nowadays that... Uh, in order to have a real good game experience, it's not all down to like, you know, gameplay or how a game controls because the thing is as well, with this game, you know, it's one of the best game experiences I've had in a long time and it is something so insignificant as pushing buttons and saying the right piece of dialogue at the right moment in time in a heated moment. It definitely... it. It shows the talent of this game and the talent of the story writers because, you know, you uh, you get to see firsthand how what Max will say or what Max will do or explore around campus will detrimentally affect the end outcome of the story. With this episode, I found that with the likes of your decisions in what you make in episode one will obviously have a big impact in episode two which we were already told about before the game even came out that it would affect the outcome of the story quite a bit. However, I didn't personally know to what end game this will work and I'm still kind of confused on this. Is it going to be that your major decisions that you make in a episode is going to significantly impact the episode after or is it going to also impact the episodes after that i know obviously they will filter into one another naturally but say for example if you make a certain decision in episode one or episode two will that impact episode five not just impact episode one two or three you know going into one another particularly in this story there is a lot of major decisions that you will make one in particular that i'm thinking of which will completely change the outcome of the episodes to come so i really did like that i decided on my second playthrough i would play obviously uh the scenarios out differently to see what happens and i can already see that there's going to be a massive massive change the game was very good at uh putting you in like uh happy go lucky moments with friends and then completely changing the dynamic as I said before to something uh, gloomy but the thing that made this episode shine for me rather than the first episode was where in the first episode when Max started to get her power you felt that uh, obviously you could do anything 
that uh, having the ability to rewind time made you invincible. And there is parts in this episode where you're going from thinking, oh, you know, everything's happy and dandy and you can rewind time and change uh, certain scenarios and certain outcomes of things. And then the game will just completely turn it on its head where although you thought you were invincible before, you will begin to feel inadequate. There's particularly, there's a part in the episode where Max can't use her power and like the player just feels so inadequate and so helpless and you feel like you have, you know, responsibility and everything becomes of an urgency. So instead, before we felt like you could like take your time and kick back and if you didn't like the outcome of something, you could just, you know, hold down the right click for, you know, rewinding times and change the scenarios. But with this, it just changed it on its head where you felt you needed to rush and get things done of an utmost importance. Uh, one particular part of this episode that I really like is where you see three, like, main suspects who are involved with... Uh, Kate and the disappearance of Rachel Amber. They're sitting around a table and you get to basically uh, address some of your concerns and some of the evidence that you've gathered around campus and you basically get to point the finger kind of like Coludo as to like, you know, who did it. Um, obviously not as drastic as that but I thought it was a real cool implementation to the game, you know. With the likes of Kate in this episode, uh, Obviously, she's a massive character in this episode and a lot of the story is, uh, you know, arced around her and basically certain things that she might or might not have done. They cover the concept of online bullying really well and it's good to see, you know, as to what lengths Kate will go to, uh, you know, try and relieve her stress with the likes of everyone, you know, giving her shit or giving her abuse around the campus. And obviously Max tries to counteract that by uh, stopping some of the people. In uh, this episode in particular, I really liked the way Max got to experiment with her power, uh, especially with Chloe. You know, it kind of... Uh, had a more lighthearted approach where Chloe asked Max at certain points, you know, uh, how can I believe you? You know, uh, we need to test your power, we need to try it out. And obviously they try it out in the diner where she finds out exactly what Chloe has in her pockets and then later tests it at Chloe's hideout down New Year, the railway tracks. Uh, you also get to see introduction to some new characters, one of them being uh, Chloe's old drug dealer. And you also get to try and instruct Chloe on a shooting range, which is another kind of funny uh, gameplay implementation to Life is Strange, which I kind of really liked. You know, it uh, made it feel a bit fresh compared to the first episode, you know. One thing I really liked about the game as well that when you loaded up episode two and you like went into like the uh, journal or the uh, little menu, you know you can read back on everything that happened in episode one and it actually is written out as to what decisions you made in episode one, which I thought was really cool uh, for your particular save file. It's not really a big thing, but it's something that uh, well I would say it's important to me. At the end of every episode, we see a review on our decisions for that particular episode, where we see like major decisions and minor decisions all put out in a list, and it gives a percentage feedback on what the actual community for that particular platform picked, like what decisions they picked, and I would like to know or have it maybe addressed as to whether or not, uh, you know, there are decisions we're going to make in episode 1 or episode 2, the earlier episodes anyway, will they have a uh, dramatic or detrimental effect to the likes of the later episodes, like episode 5? I would like this to maybe be addressed or be somewhere so that, you know, people can, if they feel they need to, go back and change it accordingly. So, Life is Strange, episode 2, what do I think of it overall? Well, the pros, it had... 
a lot better voice acting than the first episode. It's a great story and it's a really good gaming experience. It's a, a bit of fresh air for me considering, you know, some of the games that I've played over the last few years that have not uh, met my substandard for story anyway, mainly because, you know, I'm a big... Uh, big story buff and I think that's important in games I think games are a fantastic medium to tell stories and you know some games have great narrative I found that Life is Strange was one of them games you know I loved the parts of the episode where it made you feel inadequate and completely changed dynamic from before where it was all happy-go-lucky and having a bit of uh, a bit of banter and a bit of uh, crack with friends where you know you're all friendly and happy and having very light-hearted conversations and then it just completely turns it on its head for you i loved how the episode showcased the power of the player in question where you seen firsthand the decisions that you made on your save file from the first episode went straight into the second episode i found that we got to see a lot better character development in the second episode where obviously max and chloe and the likes of kate as well um you get to see a lot more to their characters i think as well with the second episode there was a lot more background items that if you actually went to the bother of going to search and read into some of the little like uh postcards or letters or posters or even the emails from people's tablets or laptops you actually got to see a lot more of the character development you know you got to see a lot more of their backstory as well which was very good for someone that's interested in that kind of thing I definitely enjoyed the length of the episode. I thought the episode was actually longer than the first one. I think I logged, I think it was four, four and a half hours in episode two there in my first playthrough. As far as the flaws go in Life is Strange episode two, I thought there could have been more um, interaction with some of the other characters. Obviously, I know... This is going to be because of the particular story arc in the uh, story where obviously episode 2 will revolve an awful lot around Max, Kate and Chloe. But I felt like we could have seen maybe more of, you know, Warren or maybe see the introduction of Max's parents who we uh, have seen talked about quite a bit and, you know... They are still sending uh, Max in-game texts where you can still read some of their letters and some of their uh, text messages. If you're looking to get a hold of uh, this episode of Life is Strange or the season pass for Life is Strange, you can follow my reference link to G2A.com. I managed to pick up the season pass relatively cheap. I think I paid 10 or £12 pounds for the entire five episodes. So if you want to check it out and go buy it i would say definitely it's worth the money you know it's definitely worth a play with the story and everything i'm personally really liking how life is strange is shaping up so uh roll on episode three anybody that hasn't played life is strange or enjoys you know third person adventure games I would definitely say that you should check out Life is Strange. Anybody that's even interested in good stories, even anyone that's not. I would go as far to say even the likes of people that aren't gamers who enjoy stories. You know, I would say with myself, you know, I enjoy a good book. I enjoy a good story. This game has an appealing factor to them people as well. So if, you know, if you've got a relative, you know, that might necessarily be a gamer and you sat them down and you put them in front of Life is Strange, I'm sure they would probably enjoy the experience because, you know, the story is good. And I, uh, like I said, I take my hat off to the story writers and uh, Don't Nod Entertainment and Square Enix, all the people that are involved because it's an absolutely great game. Can't wait for episode three. Definitely will be doing a video on it when it comes out. So that's going to be my review, overview on Life is Strange Episode 2. Until next time, my friends, goodbye.